Okay guys, uh, Timmy coming at you again and today <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about the functions of insulin. Look, to understand metabolism and then ultimately to understand diabetes, you have to, you have to understand how insulin functions. And if you understand the functions of insulin, then you can understand what will happen if you don't have insulin. So again, diabetes, rampant, a lot of people developing diabetes. Um, so you can't swing a dead cat without having to take care of a patient that has either type 1 or type 2 diabetes. So what this little informative video is going to do for you, at least I hope it does, is it's going to explain to you the functions of insulin. And when you get that, life will be good for you because then if you don't have insulin, all the things that insulin did ain't going to get done. And that's what produces the signs and symptoms of diabetes. So right now, I'm going to go over just the functions of insulin. First of all, when a cell needs to make ATP, when a cell needs to make energy, it uses the fuel that's most readily available. And what ultimately determines the fuel that is most readily available for your cells to use is insulin. So insulin is really the big dog in dictating what fuel you use to make ATP inside your cells. There's three potential fuels you can use. You can use glucose, you can use fatty acids, or you can use amino acids. Now let's talk about this for a minute. First of all, in most cases, for the average human being, you don't routinely use amino acids. And the reason you don't use, uh, routinely use amino acids is you need those amino acids to build protein. So it's like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. If I have a fireplace and I have a pile of wood by my fireplace, would it make sense for me? to take a sawzall, go up to my attic, cut down the beams that make up my rafters, and burn those in my fireplace? Right, I don't have to answer that. So amino acids build structural and functional proteins inside your cells. So you're not going to routinely use that to make ATP. The two fuels that you're going to uh, routinely use are glucose and fat fatty acids. And insulin is going to determine which one you use. So with that said, let's go over, <clears throat> excuse me, the functions of insulin. All right. So number one, first and foremost, um, insulin is a hormone. So by definition, a hormone is released from one part of the body or one specific cell type and then has its action someplace else. So insulin is released from the beta cells of the pancreas. And its job is, one of its jobs, is to lower your blood sugar. That's not its only job. And insulin is released in response to an elevated blood sugar. So if someone were to ask you to define diabetes, if you said it's a disease of impaired glucose metabolism, you wouldn't be entirely correct. Diabetes is a disease of metabolism. It affects every aspect of your metabolism. So and again, it has profound effects. So one, it's a hormone. It's released from the beta cells of the pancreas in response to an elevated blood sugar. So here goes to my patented two curved lines on a circle. By the way, I invented this about eight years ago when I was eating dinner. And I think I was having beefaroni. I don't really remember. But anyways, I digress. So watch. Here's a cell. Who cares what cell it is? 
right? Don't make them, never mind. Embedded in the cell is a little protein receptor called an insulin receptor. So we know, or at least we should, that if you eat sugar, your digestive system breaks it down, whatever you ate, and if it has sugar in it, carbs in it, that's going to cause your blood sugar to elevate. Now, if your blood sugar is elevated, let's say when you started eating, it was 81, and then you eat, right, in about 15, 20 minutes, your blood sugar is going to go up to, say, 140. That's bad for you, right, because you got high blood sugar, and the goal of the body is to maintain homeostasis. So you got to try to get that back down. So in response to the elevated blood sugar, the cells of the pancreas, the beta cells, are going to sense that. And when they do that, they release the hormone insulin into the blood. Now, a couple of things. Number one, glucose is impermeable to the cell membrane. Glucose cannot simply go from the blood into the cell. What has to happen is you have to open up a special protein gate on the cells to allow glucose to go in. What opens up that gate is our buddy, our pal. Let's hear it for the one and only insulin. So here's a little gate. And when insulin binds to that specific protein receptor, it's going to open up that gate and allow glucose to go from high concentration in the blood to low concentration in the cell. And it will become, inside the cell, glucose will become the most readily available fuel for your cells to use. And that's what gets broken down inside your cells to make ATP. Now, <clears throat> you don't just eat sugar, right? At least we would hope not. So in addition to, so that's one of the functions of insulin. Here's another function. What's in a fat cell? I'll tell you. It's fat. So when you eat, the fat that you ate gets transported around in your blood in the form of triglyceride. Right? These are triglycerides. Now look. Again, let's go back to slide number one. Boom. When a cell needs to make ATP, a cell uses the fuel that's most readily available. Now watch. If your blood sugar is elevated, you want to lower it. So when your blood sugar is high and you have insulin around, you want insulin to lower your blood sugar so that glucose becomes the most readily available. But if there's a ton of triglyceride floating around in your blood, that could be most readily available. And if that's the case, this cell right here will use that fat. So if your blood sugar is high, you want to lower your blood sugar. So you somehow have to make sure that triglyceride ain't the most readily available. So the other function of insulin is to take fat, triglyceride, that's in the blood and store it in fat cells. So if fat gets stored in a fat cell, triglyceride gets stored in this fat cell, triglyceride can't be used inside this cell to make ATP. So the other function of insulin is to take triglyceride that's in the blood and dump it and store it into fat cells. The other thing that insulin does 
is any triglyceride that's already stored in the fat cell, insulin prevents it from coming out. So not only do you store the triglycerides that were in the blood in fat cells, any triglyceride that was already stored there, it gets locked up. So that guarantees that glucose is going to be the fuel that's most readily available. The other thing, this, this is getting kind of busy, so I'll make a new two curved lines in a circle, which, by the way, I invented eight years ago while I was eating supper. I think it was a Hot Pocket or maybe a Polish. I don't remember. Anyways, what's in a fat cell? <clears throat> fat. You should probably write that down. Also, you should like me on Facebook because you can tell people, you know what I learned from this guy's video? I learned that there's fat in a fat cell. So insulin stores the fat that was in the blood. Insulin does. So when insulin's around, insulin stores the fat in the fat cell. And any fat that was already in the fat cell locks it up. Bam. So that fat is trapped in that fat cell. Can't be used inside this cell to make ATP. The other thing that insulin does is it takes amino acids and allows them to go into the cell. So insulin allows amino acids into the cell. What do amino acids build? They build protein. So watch, watch. What do you already got in the cell? To break down to make ATP, you already got glucose. So are you going to use the amino acids to make ATP? Nope. You're going to use those amino acids that insulin allowed in to make protein. And any hormone that makes protein is anabolic. It builds things. So bodybuilders like me, if you can see me, I'm six foot six, I'm 250 pounds, and my percent body fat is negative. I have like a negative 3.5% body fat. Yep, that's me. Anyways, so insulin builds protein. That's another one of its functions. Another one of its lovely functions is to stimulate our buddy, our pal, the one and only, and let's hear it for him, this little pump inside the cell called your uh, sodium potassium pump. Now, if you recall, you got insulin around. Why was insulin around? Your blood sugar was high, right? Insulin is going to stimulate that sodium potassium pump. That's a stimulant. What does the pump do? It takes three sodiums that leaked into the cell through those little ion sodium ionate channels and pumps it back out. And it takes two potassiums that leaked out through potassium ion channels and pumps it back in. And because you're working against the concentration gradient, that requires. ATP. So this is of clinical import, right? And when we get there, I'll explain that. The other profound function of insulin, and I don't have a lot of time to go into it, but I will just say this, is that insulin and fact Insulin stimulates healing. So without insulin, you don't heal so well. Now look, this is one simple video on the functions of insulin. I'm going to end it now. 
and then I'm going to make another little video on the different types of diabetes and I'm going to break it down for you that way. Then, <clears throat> excuse me, then I will go into the signs and symptoms of diabetes and then explain to you the difference between the signs and symptoms of hyperglycemia and the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia. And if you understand how this stuff works, you'll never have to remember signs and symptoms. You'll know how it works. It's not that bad. All right. Hope you learned something, and I'll chat at you later.